So far, you are already familiar with the electronic circuit elements called resistor and capacitor. So the purpose of resistor is to resist the flow of current and it results to a voltage drop in a circuit. On the other hand, the purpose of a capacitor is to store electrical energy and this is done by the accumulation of positive charge in one plate and a negative charge on the other plate. When current flows through a capacitor, the flow of charges may stop or momentarily stop depending on the capacitance of the capacitor. Let's now add a new electronic circuit element to your collection and this is called an inductor. So the purpose of an inductor is to store magnetic energy in the form of magnetic field. Note that this storage of magnetic energy happens momentarily because it only transpires when there is a change in current across the inductor. The practical purpose of an inductor is to oppose a sudden surge of current in a circuit. To further elaborate this process, consider this coil of wire connected to a switch and battery. When I suddenly close this switch, then the current flows through the coils and the coil generates a magnetic field. However, during the quick initial surge of current through the circuit, the current increases from zero to a steady value. But during this transition, the magnetic field also increases from zero to a steady value. Hence, there is a change in magnetic flux in this cross-section and by virtue of Faraday's law, there will be an induced EMF in our inductor. We call this self-induced EMF. This induced EMF produces a magnetic field that opposes this change of flux. In other words, an inductor basically opposes the variation of current in a circuit. This induced EMF is based on the magnetic flux due to this current. So similarly, if we just consider a single loop here in the inductor, the flux experienced by this loop due to this current is obviously directly proportional to this current. I'll just represent the current here with small i. By the way, we use small i to represent current that is changing over time. But if we consider all loops in this inductor, their effects are additive. Hence, if we have n number of loops, we just multiply this flux with n sub b n, assuming that each loop experiences a magnetic flux of phi sub b to get their sum. We just multiply phi sub b with n which is the number of loops and this is directly proportional to the current in the circuit. For self-induced EMF, in order for this to become an equal sign, we must multiply this with a constant. And for self-induced EMF, instead of capital M, we represent the direct proportionality constant with capital I. And this concept of proportionality is called self-inductance. So unlike mutual inductance, self-inductance is actually caused by its own magnetic field. In such a way, there is a varying current passing through the inductor. And this varying current produces a varying magnetic field and since we have a varying magnetic field we have a varying magnetic flux and this results to an induced EMF. Remember that Lenz's law dictates that this induced EMF produces a magnetic field in such a way to oppose the change in magnetic flux. In our case if the current is increasing then this is the direction of the resulting magnetic field due to the induced EMF. Otherwise, if the current is decreasing, then the induced EMF will produce a magnetic field in such a way to oppose the decreasing magnetic field. Going back to the self-inductance, I could actually rewrite this in terms of self-inductance. So this is our expression for self-inductance. We would like to derive an expression for the value of the induced EMF in this inductor. So if there is a change in magnetic flux through this inductor, based on Faraday's law, there will be an induced EMF. So to derive an expression for the induced EMF in this inductor due to self-inductance, let me take the time derivative of both sides of this equation. So in this expression, the number of turns is often constant, so I can put this outside the derivative. And L is the constant self-inductance, so I can also put this outside the derivative. So I now have N d phi over dt equals L 
di over dt. So recall that in Faraday's law, the induced EMF is equal to negative n d phi over dt. So this is actually equal to negative e. So I have negative e equals L D I over D T and hence E equals negative L D I over D T. This is our expression for the self induced EMF. When we include inductors in electric circuits, we use the following sign convention so that we can apply Kirchhoff's loop rule to analyze circuits. Consider this inductor and assume that the current flows from point A to point B. The potential difference between point A and point B is B sub AB equals, let's just focus on its magnitude. And later, we discuss when it is positive or negative. So to decide whether this potential difference across the inductor is a potential rise or potential drop, in other words, to decide whether this V sub AB is positive or negative, we look at the original form of self-induced EMF, which is this one. So let me rewrite it. Here, induced EMF is also the potential difference across the inductor. And this is equal to negative L times di over dt. Now, if we have an increasing current through the inductor, then this term is obviously positive. Notice that positive times negative, it will result to a negative potential difference. Hence, when we have an increasing current, the sign of the potential difference across the inductor is negative. Otherwise, if we have a decreasing current across the inductor, then this term here is obviously negative. And negative times negative will result to a positive potential difference. Hence, if the current is decreasing, we have a positive potential difference. If the change in current across the inductor is zero, then this is 0 multiplied to L, then the potential difference across the inductor is 0 as well. Let's try to use the concept of self-inductance to solve some problems. This problem is from OpenStax University Physics Chapter 14 Inductance, Problem 39. A coil with a self-inductance of 2 Henrys carries a current that varies with time according to I of t equals 2 amperes times sine of 120 pi times time. Find an expression for the EMF induced in the coil. The given for mutual inductance is 2.0 Henry's and current is represented by this equation 2.0 ampere multiplied to sine 120 pi t. To find the induced EMF, we use the expression we derived earlier which is negative L di over dt and just plug the expression for current. Negative times L is equal to this, 2.0 Henry's. Time derivative of sine 120 pi t is cosine 120 pi t times So this is our expression, cosine 120 pi t, its unit is in volts. So if I want a positive expression, notice that this is negative. If I want a positive expression for the induced EMF, recall that sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine cos cosine which is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta so to convert this into positive sign notice that i have to copy this expression cosine with a negative sign so i'll try to force this with a negative sign and then just try to get rid of this by just plugging pi over 2 because cosine pi over 2 is 0 so in order for this to become a negative sign, I'll just add a negative pi over 2 here. Equals sine alpha cosine pi over 2, which is 0. 
this entire term becomes 0, minus cosine alpha sine pi over 2, which is 1. Since I have now negative cosine something, and this is negative cosine something, I can replace this with this expression. So I'll now have a positive expression for the induced EMF, which is 480 pi sine 120 pi t minus pi over 2. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!